Good morning. Good morning, everyone. If you could please to start taking take your seats, that would be great. Good morning. Welcome to the 12th Annual Orange County Water Summit. I am Steve Sheldon, a board member and past president of the Orange County Water District. It's been my distinct pleasure to serve as co-chair along with Director Jeff Thomas uh, of this great event for the past 12 years. Uh, we, we thank you for coming and every year it keeps getting better and better. We work very hard at it and we appreciate you coming and listening to all the exciting sessions that we, ha that we have here. Before we get started on the sessions, I wanna really do a great thank you to the Grand Californian Hotel uh, at the Disney Resort. They just provide a, an amazing, what well, amazing, I guess, I guess, experience here for us. And everything that they do outside and inside, it, just, it has just been wonderful. Particularly to Frank Delavara, the Director of Environmental Affairs. Is Frank here? Not, he's, he's coming. Barbara Mills, our, the Environmental Project Manager. Greg Deems and the entire banquet staff who do just, just a wonderful job s serving us. Uh, designer Julie Bertrand and Denise Dome and the entire Disneyland Resort entertainment team for the lovely decor and staging. Thank you very much, we really appreciate it. <laughs> this year's theme, and we worked actually quite a bit to, to, to put it together with, with our, with our uh, Water Summit team and, and ad hoc committee, is under the microscope. And so it, we're gonna looking at droughts, um, conservation type of mandates, um, strict water practices, extreme weather, increased water rates, and how all that works together, and uh, how it's making a greater impact upon households and businesses in California, and, and Orange County. And the more this happens, and more you have conservation, and yet you have water rates, because you're conserving, and you know, it just brings more um, attention and focus on water districts, and what they're doing, and how they're working to make themselves a great special agency. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we're gonna focus on, on the management and best practices of many water districts. Before we get started, I'll let Jeff Thomas come up and do some introductions and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Good morning to all of you. This is another exciting year. We plan to put some meat on the bones today, so I want to thank, though, some sponsors. Right before we get going, we've got some people who were very instrumental in helping bring this along. First, Mesa Water, uh, our luncheon speaker. And uh, almost every year since we've hosted this, uh, Mesa has been involved and uh, appreciate their participation in the event. Also to Irvine Ranch Water District, their program sponsor. And uh, Boutier, they're a session sponsor today and uh, a past sponsor as well. So thank you for your sponsorship of this event. All of our table associate breakfast and chamber sponsors, we want to thank you. You're listed in the programs. I hope that you get the prominent display. Uh, but we could not host this event without you. So always, thank you for being here. I'd also like to acknowledge members of the boards who are here today or who will be joining us later. And uh, from my board, which is the Municipal Water District of Orange County, uh, our president uh, dire and director, Brett Barbary. Uh, Joan Finnegan cannot be here. She's, she is uh, uh, elsewhere. Um, and uh, Larry Dick, Sat Tamara Bucci, me. Who cares? Anyway. <laughs> I love you, Jeff. I, oh, oh, well, thank you. You know what? I feel better already. This is starting out, this is starting to be a good day. <laughs> and then Megan U. Schneider. Thank you for being here too. Also, uh, working with Steve Sheldon, I want to thank his board too. And from their board, we have uh, Vince Sarmiento. He is president of the board. Uh, Kathy Green uh, is here. Kathy, thank you. Steve Sheldon, of course. And um, we have uh, Jordan Brandman, I believe he is in the house too. Uh, Kelly Rove, he is here. Yeah, good. And then uh, Tree Ta and Roger Yo. So I think that covers it. And if I've forgotten anybody, please let me know. I want to acknowledge you. A special thank you, though, to um, all the public affairs staff that put this on. It's always worthwhile. Fritz knows that you're only as good as the people you're working with. And, uh, they do, they make us look really good. If you guys have any questions, anything you need, let us know, we'll take care of it today. And you're in very good hands. We also have several elected officials and their staff members who will be joining us here today. I'd like to acknowledge them and what I'm gonna do is uh, 
give them a hand at the end of the introduction. It's always good to do that, and we'll speed it along. I'm going to get you through this. From the U.S. Senate, this is going to be Becca Chanel. She's field representative for U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein. From the U.S. House of Representatives, Rachel Rinsky. This is uh, sealed, uh, excuse me, senior field representative. And uh, for Congressman Lou Correa, uh, Correa, if I butchered your name, I'm so sorry. I, I'm trying hard here. Clayton Hurd, field representative for the Congressman Alan Lowenthal is here. California State Senate, Scott Carpenter, District Director, Office of Senator John Morlock. We also have Taylor Quinn, Staff Assistant, Office of Senator Lingling Chang. State Assembly, we have Stephen Nguyen. He is here from, he's District Director from the Office of Assemblyman Philip um, Chen. We have Christopher Aguilara. He is Senior Field Representative Office of Assemblywoman Quirk Silva. And Nathan Searcy, he's Field Representative Office of Assemblyman Kathy Petrie Norris. And then Brandon Yerudia, Yerudia excuse me, Field Representative Office uh, for Assemblyman Tyler Deep. And then Rafael Batista, intern for the Office of Assemblyman Tyler Deep. Julie Kearns, Field Representative Office of Stephen Choi. If I, again, if I've forgotten anybody, please let me know. All right, let's kick this off. The first thing we do and, and uh, we want to do is if you would all stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Also noting, too, that this week was Memorial Day week, and uh, we honor our veterans always. If you join me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Thank you. Steve? Thank you, Jeff. So that was a great opportunity that I have to introduce our master of ceremonies, no, none, no one other than the great Fritz Coleman. Fritz, thank you very much for, for joining us today again. This will be his third time that he has served as the master of ceremonies for our program. He is one of Southern California's most iconic weathercasters. In fact, let me change what was written. He is Southern California's most iconic weathercaster. Absolutely. Fritz has been with NBC4 for 37 years. He has been recognized by many, by many newspapers as best weathercaster and is treasurer of Los Angeles and has been, he holds the name of honorary mayor by the city of Los Angeles. Fritz is, is, is well known for his humor. Uh, when, he's, when he's not doing his day job, he has stand-up comedy at many uh, comedy clubs such as the Improv and other ones. And uh, hopefully we can get some of that, and we will get some of that humor injected here to today. I've, I've heard some, it's, it's pretty funny, it's good. Um, Fritz also loves to volunteer, and his, one of his favorite charities is Goodwill Industries. He spends a lot of time there, and that's something that, that, that um, is, is very good for our community. Um, when he's not working and being funny and volunteering, he spends time with his family. He has a daughter and two sons, and they live all together in San Fernando Valley. So I just want to, you know, be short and sweet as he asked me to be. Please come up. We want to thank you. We have, we have a video, I believe, that you, that you prepared for us. And I guess we could start that now. Hello there, water people. Fritz Coleman here to give you your water forecast for California and Orange County. Remember when drought was the perpetual theme of California water scene? Two of the last three water years have been very wet. The 2018-2019 water year, which started in October, is looking great. Last year, we saw a measly 3.66 inches of rain locally. This year, however, we've already seen more than 20 inches of rain. Not so fast, though. We still need to make up for those five years of consecutive drought. We also saw incredible snowpack levels. Statewide snowpack in April came to 162% of average. So, if you hadn't hit the slope yet this year, there's still little time to do so. This is fantastic news for all of California. After suffering one of the worst droughts of our lifetimes, even if it's fading into the rearview mirror. Now, we all know why having all that snow is important. 
Here in California, the snowpack is one of our most unpredictable storage accounts. In May, the state's six largest water reservoirs were filled to the brim, between 92 and 129 percent of historical average. Sadly, though, during this wonderfully wet year, we still lost so much precious water into the ocean because there's nowhere else to put it. If we had built storage projects like Sites Reservoir, we could have potentially captured 600,000 acre feet as of March 8th, which would have equaled more than 194 billion gallons of water, enough to serve 4.4 million Californians for one year. Instead, that water was wasted. Here in Orange County, thanks to an emergency deviation granted by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Orange County Water District was able to store stormwater behind Prado Dam and Riverside at a higher elevation. This allowed them to capture and store more than an additional 20,000 acre feet, or 64 billion gallons of water that OCWD put back into the Orange County groundwater basin, where it became part of Orange County's drinking water supply. Without the deviation, the stormwater would have been lost to the Pacific Ocean, and the cost to purchase the equivalent amount in imported supplies from Northern California or the Colorado River would have been more than $20 million. The Corps is also partnering with OCWD and other agencies in Sonoma, Turlock, and Yuba to do more research on atmospheric rivers. It's a phrase we forecasters have been using more often lately. Atmospheric rivers are relatively long, narrow regions in the atmosphere, like rivers in the sky that transport most of the water vapor outside of the tropics. The water vapor rises and it cools to create heavy precipitation. The partners hope to develop better forecasting for extreme rain events, which will help improve reservoir operations to better prepare for floods and capture more stormwater. Now, What's the latest with a water fix? This time last year, the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, with a heavy lift from the Municipal Water District of Orange County, approved additional investments in the California water fix. They supported funding the building of two tunnels to bring water from Northern California to Southern California. There was hope that former Governor Jerry Brown would have had all the T's crossed and the I's dotted for the project before his term ended. But he was unable to get the ball into the end zone. The new California governor, Gavin Newsom, favors a one-tunnel system and is calling for a more diversified water strategy. He recently issued an executive order that the California Natural Resources Agency, California Environmental Protection Agency, and the California Department of Food and Agriculture prepare a water resilience portfolio. So where does that leave the water fix? Well, the Department of Water Resources says scrapping the old plan could delay the project by as much as three years while officials file new environmental reviews and reapply for permits. The governor says he wants a tunnel. Now, the question is, how big will that tunnel be? And what happens if the Central Valley folks have a change of heart and decide that they want in? Meantime, MWDOC continues to beat the drum that two tunnels is the best way to ensure reliable conveyance and at the same time provide environmental benefits as well. I mean, we've only spent like a quarter of a billion dollars over the past decade or so studying this. Build something already. Also, folks aren't sure how the state plans on funding new water projects in a diversified portfolio since the state revolving fund low interest loan program is overprescribed with a backlog of $8 billion in requests. There is some optimism that the federal government will be putting forth an infrastructure package in the near future, but our water problems are far from being fixed. Stay tuned. While water quantity issues dominated the headlines last year, water quality will most likely be at the forefront in the year ahead. Water agencies in California and around the U.S. are also looking more closely at compounds called PFOA and PFOS. These are fluorinated organic chemicals that were used to make carpets and clothing and fabrics for furniture, paper packaging for food, and other materials like cookware resistant to water grease and stains. They're also used for firefighting at airfields and in a number of industrial processes. Some states back east heavily impacted by manufacturers of these products, 
have set their own drinking water guidelines and standards for these compounds. In summer 2018, the California Division of Drinking Water established notification levels and response levels for PFOA and PFOS. OCWD's lab became the first public agency lab in California to get certification to test for these compounds. Agencies throughout California are now testing, and local OC agencies have formed a task force on the issue and are committed to serving drinking water that meets state and federal guidelines. Meanwhile, approximately 200 California water systems in disadvantaged communities do not have access to clean drinking water. The governor's administration is pushing for a statewide water tax to fix these communities. You heard right, a tax on drinking water, with water agencies becoming tax collectors for the state. The water community wants to help solve this problem. That's where SB 414 comes in. SB 414 would create the Small System Water Authority Act of 2019. It would essentially merge or consolidate these failing systems with utilities that already have technical expertise in place while providing transparency and government process. So in summary, the good news is we're out of a drought. The water fix is still in motion. We're trying to diversify California's water portfolio and efforts are being made to bring clean water to disadvantaged communities. It won't be easy, but rest assured your water leaders in Orange County are doing everything they can to fight the good fight on these issues and more. Well. Fritz, if you could come up here, I want you to join me and we're going to adjourn the meeting because that was so good. I can go home now. <laughs> was that not amazing? Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> I had to be in a hyperbaric chamber after I read all that. <laughs> that was really interesting. But I I'll tell you, I'm so thankful to be back here, everybody. It's good to see you. I made a lot of friends here two years ago when I started, and I'm so thankful to be invited back anywhere. <laughs> but I've been here since Tuesday, standing in line for the Star Wars exhibit, so. <laughs> this is really an interesting time to be here. I thought, you know, we'd be overtaken, and, you know, there'd be stormtroopers walking up and down the hall here at the Grand Californian. But here's, here's one of the great stats. And it affects what we're talking about here today. The lines for the new Star Wars exhibit starting today will be six hours long. They're giving out bathroom passes <laughs> so that you can get out of line, go to the bathroom, and return to line. And uh, I think probably we're going to see some fluctuations in the water pressure here in Orange County over that period of time. So. We're going to be discussing that. How many people are here for the first time? Anybody here for the first time? Good, good. We love new victims. <laughs> We're so thankful you're here. I'll tell you, I, I was saying this to a couple of people before the program. I wish that the reporters at Channel 4, everybody sort of has their own expertise, and we have a couple of our uh, really wonderful, uh, long-standing reporters like Patrick Healy, who have taken on drought as a personal passion and agricultural interests. And during the, the peak of the drought, he was going up to the Central Valley and doing agricultural stories about how it was affecting farmers and the large agricultural overview. I wish they could be here for this because I've learned so much over the last couple of years. And I think the topics we're addressing today are gonna be even more important. Flint, Michigan has been in the headlines politically and environmentally, and we're gonna talk about pollutants, and this is all real world stuff, and I think you're gonna uh, really be interested in what we have to cover today. You'll have a better understanding of water and a greater appreciation of the quality of water and getting it uninterrupted 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, before we take a closer look at water, I'd like to give you the lay of the land today. 
Our speakers are incredibly accomplished in each of their individual fields. However, we will try and keep speaker introductions very, very short so that we have time to hear uh, all of what they have to say. So their bios are included in the program and you can peruse them at your leisure. Their Twitter handles and their other social media information is also included in the program. We strongly encourage you to share your experience here today on social media. Secondly, we ask our speakers to please try and keep to your allotted time so that all of our speakers get an opportunity to cover their topics and to allow some time for our moderators and guests to ask the questions. And sometimes that's the most uh, interesting part of the day. To help us keep moving, speakers will hear this sound. <laughs> when you hear a bazinga, you have a two minute warning. And then when you hear this sound, And that doesn't ruin the ambiance of what you're trying to say. I don't know what will. <laughs>